Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about Tombs and their latest record, Under Sullen Skies, out November 20th on Season of Mist. The album has 12 tracks, 60 minutes in length, and this is the band's fifth full-length studio album. They released earlier in this year an EP, Monarchy of Shadows, and now they're back with a full-length record. I don't know if these two being released in the same year was part of the original plan. They were supposed to go on tour with Napalm Death. I was supposed to see them in the city of Toronto, but then we all know what has happened and that was completely scrapped. So we're here to talk about another release from this band in 2020, which proves something that I really believe is that these guys have uh, a safety deposit box filled with material, ready to be released at any given time. Perhaps this album is definitely proof of that, at least in my mind it is. This is a band that works extremely hard, always pushing the envelope, always putting out great quality material after great quality material. Now, once you dive into this album, I think you'll realize that this is a black metal driven record. Having said that, it's not a black metal album. I don't see it that way. I see that the influence of the sound, of the experience, of everything that gravitates around it, it's definitely pushed by black metal. But Tombs is not your regular band or your regular black metal band. They really push the boundaries of their sound, of the experience, of their influences, and they try to move it into other arenas in order to make their sound overall more rich, in order to add layers, in order to add strength and depth to their creation. And this record definitely falls under those parameters. As you progress through it, you can see the atmosphere that it has, how somber it is, how dark it is, how melodic, how melancholic, how raw, how diverse. All of these things are coming at play in order to create an album that's filled with life from the first song to the last song even though sometimes as you're walking through it you don't see any life at all you feel like you're in the desert but the overall soundscape of the record is one that's very rich in what it has to give and what it has to offer and while using black metal as the main beacon or as the main source of inspiration it definitely doesn't stop at its doors it doesn't stop within its boundaries it goes way beyond that once you move into the structure of the album, this is an album that has a lot of dynamic moments through it and you have to have them in there. You're looking at 12 tracks, 60 minutes. It's a long, hard to digest album. So from a structural perspective, you need to give the listener a little bit of peaks and valleys as you're progressing through it to match the same peaks and valleys that you're getting from the soundscape. Otherwise, it would be a very long road. It would be almost overbearing. You would get lost in it, and it would be an album that would not allow you to come back to it again because you just felt like you walked through the desert with it. It's not that way because of how they constructed the tracks and how they overall structured the album, and then obviously the diversity of sound that it has. The two elements are really working well together in order to give you enough of ups and enough of downs to change your eyesight, to change your perception of the album and the songs. The lyrical content is perhaps the most diverse element of the album. There's a lot of diversity within the album, but I felt that the lyrics were perhaps the most diverse element of them all. And that works well with this record. They are allowed to be creative, they are allowed to tell different stories, to go into different arenas, into different topics, and not just follow one single path of motion where everything is really tied into that one path, to that one road, and you can't deviate from it. I felt that they were on a road, but they did take some uh, detours while walking down that road. So it's not an album that has everything tied up together and that gives you a, a lot of diversity as far as the overall lyrical approach. From the vocal side, the album is very consistent. There are changes as you progress through it. It's not an album that you get one size fits all from the first song to the last song. But overall, the bigger picture, it's a consistent record, very balanced, very consistent vocally from the first all the way to the last song. The changes that are happening are very minimal and they're happening almost as a way to add atmosphere to the overall soundscape. Overall, I actually felt that the vocals add a lot of atmosphere to the overall soundscape of the record. Uh, this is a band that, in my opinion, really uses the vocals as an instrument, not just to tell a story, not just to uh, bring to life the lyrics that the record has to offer, but to really add a, a, a lot of layers, a lot of texture, a, a lot of power and strength to the overall presence that the songs have and the atmosphere that they carry within them. Overall, this is an incredible record. These guys put a lot of work, they create very uh, intricate albums with a lot of different layers, a lot of different moving pieces, and this album is no different. It is just a very hard to digest album. This is not fast food, this is a seven course meal. You have to sit down, you have to walk your way through it, you have to appreciate it, you have to understand it. So this is definitely an album that will grow on people, but it's not an album that you can immediately enjoy or grasp the first time that you go through it. There's just too much there for you to even be able to comprehend 
all the work that went into it. So it's a difficult album to process, it's a difficult album to enjoy at first glance, but if you stick with it, if you work your way through it, I think you're gonna discover that this album has a lot of great things to offer in the long run. Now, as far as songs are concerned, I wanna start off with Void of Constellation, heavy, thunderous track. The drums and guitars add so much power to this song. They have so much strength. The vocals bring in a lot of darkness and create an incredible atmosphere that this record, that this specific track, sorry, has to offer. The overall guitars in the song are amazing. They're definitely one of the beacons of how this song sounds and how this song feels. They're very rich in sound. They have a great delivery and a great range, really allowing the track to move uh, and move slowly, but move and progress as you're walking your way through it, as you're working through all the different elements that allows it to be methodic, but filled with life at the same time. And I have to mention the bass because the bass on this song is outstanding. It adds a different flair, it adds a different level. It doesn't add necessarily grooviness to the track, but it does add a little bit of presence. It makes the song feel slightly bigger. Like it's, it's, it's fuller, it, it has more presence, if you will. And I like that. I like the overall presence that it gives to the song and how it expands its sound. Next, Mordom. The bass and drums on this song are purely amazing, specifically when they start the track. The track starts in a very robust way with those two elements working together to give you the strength that you need to, and, and also to set the tone for what the rest of the song is gonna feel like. The drums are powerful overall, not just in that intro, they stay powerful throughout the track, really heavy, really push, pushing this track, really giving it a, a, a lot of strength, making it very heavy as it progresses. Every time the drums come in, you always feel the heaviness going through the roof uh, on this track. The guitars get pushed by the heaviness that the drums have. The drums are really pushing those guitars into the forefront, allowing them to be heavy as well, but also melodic and have a little bit more diversity of approach in them. Chugging along, but still being melodic, still being heavy, because the, the heaviness from the drums is really consistent and allows the guitars to progress in a different, in a different fashion. The vocals ignite the overall intensity and strength that the song has. I really felt that they were the outlet for everything that was happening musically. The solos are great on this track. They add darkness and light at the same time because they have a dark mood, but the way they sound, there's a lot of lightness into it. So I love how the solos work on this song, what they represent and the life that they breathe into it. Last but not least, Somber Ruin. Uh, it's a more atmospheric song, a song that completely changes from the previous two. The previous two had a lot of heaviness, they had a lot of presence, you could feel them moving along. This song moves, but it moves almost at a snail type pace. It's a more atmospheric track, it has a different landscape as far as the sound, as far as the structure, as far as the approach is concerned. The vocals add atmosphere. The vocals are there just for that, to create an ambiance, to create darkness, to create a very unique presence that this song has to offer. It adds despair, it adds sadness, it adds darkness. The way they come across and how they mingle with the overall soundscape on this track, they feel like they're in the depths of hell and they're trying to creep out every so often but never really able to come into the forefront. So that adds to the overall atmosphere that this track has to offer. Definitely the darkest track on this album, at least from my perspective. This is it, this is Tombs with Under Sullen Skies out November 20th on Season of Mist. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles, use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care guys.